Um, so I guess most people were in the, the previous session. I'm Trisha Johnson from the Animal Genomics Team based at, at Ag Research in Vermeer. Um, this presentation is one about kind of a novel area of research that we're starting to think about, not only in our team, but I know there's teams at Massey also starting to work in this area. Um, and so it is about investigating the potential for global positioning satellite data, i.e. GPS data, to provide information on new behaviour around the time of lambing. So in a production system, um, lamb survival and maternal ability are important for ethical and production reasons. Global positioning satellites um, or GPS devices allow spatial and temporal data sets to be generated which can describe you movement um, around the time of lambing. We also had that kind of additional question though of whether there was anything about that used behaviour that we could link through to anything around not only where she's lambed and when she lambed, but in terms of the maternal outcomes. So we're increasingly interested in that kind of trait of, of maternal weaning weight, of trying to get as many lambs away from off the, off the farm on the truck, um, unless they're replacements at weaning. And so the, those maternal attributes are really important. But all we can see is, is animals out in the paddock and not really have any idea about those interactions or what's actually happening. So this was work that was actually... Um, one of these weird things about the conference is that this work was actually undertaken in 2018, so, so quite a while ago now. Um, but this was one of the very first projects that I received these GPS collars, and so this was our, our first deployment of them. So we obtained 25 custom-made um, GPS collars for sheep, customised by um, Mark Carter up in, in Fielding. Um, and so they are just a, a GPS collar but they are run by an 18-ampere lithium-thionol battery. They are kind of set to, to run um, kind of continuously, capturing any movement data, but kind of do go to sleep if the animals aren't moving much and just log every 10 minutes when it's kind of not really actively moving. Um, so these um, animals were um, at Twin Farm, so Russell Welsh and Andrew Welsh, co um, Andrew was a co-author on this paper, so Twin Farm Genetics just outside of, of Gore. Um, for ethical reasons, um, because this is the first time we deployed them, they wanted to have them on their hill country use, we had to keep them in one of their flatland paddocks where they were actually going around and, and doing a lambing beat so that we could check that the collars and the ewes didn't come to odds with each other, but we were fine in that regard. So the paddock that these ewes were lambing in was a just over a four hectare paddock. Um, some of the ewes were removed for, for lambing assistance, so we didn't get quite a full data set. And the GPS collars were fitted on the 21st of September. The 23rd of September, a lovely Southland winter lambing storm came through and they had snow. Um, and yeah, so we went through because Andrew and Russell and the team were, it was their stud, they were actually going around and checking these ewes twice daily. We were able to, to determine roughly when the ewes had lambed. So GPS data, when you think that we were kind of getting, um, we got 18 days worth of data and it was kind of continuous unless the animals weren't moving, in which case we had 10 minutes. We got thousands of data points um, for, for each animal and so the cleaning of GPS data does, does require a bit, um, especially just trying to get rid of the bits at the start and the end when, when the collars are being fitted and trying to condense it down to only that data that is within the paddock. So there's a whole lot of literature about how this type of, of data is analysed um, and I took some of those methods but I also applied some, some different methods to, to looking at the data. So we went through and we grouped the data into to three hour blocks to kind of get that diurnal variation across the day. And we used the GPS data to calculate some different traits. The distance between the time points, the time between the time points, as I said before, if they weren't actively moving, it was just recording it every 10 minutes, but if they were actively moving, it was kind of pinging and recording as they went. And so because we had distance and time, we we're also able to, to calculate that speed trait. We were then able to kind of sum those kind of traits up and get an average or, um, for, for that three hour block, 
or able to work out the total distance that was travelled within the three hour block. The trait that hadn't really, there were some, some similar traits but not quite expressed like we went on and did, was to think about, if we're thinking about a ewe around her lambing time, one of the things that, that strikes in my mind is that they kind of camp, that they have their, their, their birthing spot effectively. And so she might be actively moving within her area, but she's actually kind of confined to a particular area to her birthing spot. And so for each one of those three hour blocks, we kind of calculated what the average position of that three hour block was. But then for each GPS coordinate, we determined how far she was away from that central part for that three hour block. So small, hour, uh, small values indicate for this particular trait, small values indicate that she wasn't, she had a very narrow home range and she wasn't moving very far. Whereas if we had large values for that particular trait, it indicated that she was actively moving through the, the environment. Um, we then plotted those GPS variables um, against time so that we could visualise the data and that's some of what I'll be presenting today. Because these were stud animals, we were able to obtain the lambing and weaning weight data from, from Sheep Improvement Limited. Um, weaning weight, we've kind of, Sue's already talked about the fact with, within our, our operations, we end up with singles, twins, triplets. Um, so we scaled the data to kind of put it on a, on a consistent um, scale to reflect the rearing rank. And then we also looked at the, not only the time around birth, but actually the behaviours of the ewes in the time post lambing for as much data as we, we actually had. Um, one of the problems with, with this type of trial, because they weren't synchronised, we didn't actually know from fitting the collars on the 21st when they were going to actually lamb. So some animals we got more post lambing data than others before the batteries ran out. So. I don't know how easy this is going to come up on the screen, and I might at this stage actually. Oh, here. So, what the, these, these two lines here represent are two U's and their patterns of behaviour and movement um, from when the collars were started and kind of the next days once they had kind of settled down. And what we can see here for this black U is this was her recorded time of lambing. And so, the trait that we have here is this average. So up here, she's, the, both of these ewes were kind of actively moving through their environment. A little bit of a sleep pattern over here overnight where they weren't moving as much, but back up to daytime movement. But when this particular ewe lambed, she changed her behaviour. So this was starting around lunchtime when previously she'd been very, very active and the other ewes were very active. But she effectively identified her birthing site or, or somewhere close to it and really wasn't moving far from that area for pretty much 24 hours around that lambing event. Um, once she lambed, she did change her pattern of behaviour. That's another slide that I'll talk about. Um, and this is the second view here. So again, you do get the diurnal variation, but you're looking for when, when that diurnal variation changes and that they effectively have this, this behaviour change where they stop actively moving through the environment around that birthing time. So the ewes that we did get, we started off with the 20 whatever collars it was, we only got data for 15, either they lambed outside after they died or they did get removed. But this was really interesting because this was, was over um, the course of um, lambing and we talked about ewes trying to find shelter for potential lambing and certainly some of them did. Some of these were the Sunday lambings when they had the snowstorm, but one of these ewes, and I didn't actually get time to go back and check, but at least one of these ewes, this was her Sunday snowstorm lambing decision. Um, so not, not particularly wise, but it does just actually show that, that there is variation in where ewes actually choose as their birthing site within a paddock. There is definitely a bit of a cluster towards the trees and, and where it was a little bit more protected, but there were other areas within Interestingly though, there were none in this particular area and you kind of can see here, it's a little bit um, different colour here, it was a slightly wet part of the paddock, so, so there were no lambing events here. But it just was really interesting to see, see this, this information. So moving on about, so that was kind of the ability of the GPS data to, to be able to detect when the lambing had actually occurred. The next question was, can we use anything about how the ewes behave after lambing to 